So let's apply this to something we can actually use. Uh, I'm going to drop the same clip back on track one and uh, right mouse click add a clip effect color correction Oop, this one here color correction okay and I will step out of the color corrector for the time being and add another clip effect which will be blur we'll put zero values in there at the moment as well as the blur amount um, so far no change has been applied to the clip let's go back to our color corrector and connect gamma to chroma contrast uh, so far they're moving in unison but they're operating on, on, on different scales gamma goes up to 10 units while chroma contrast goes up to 100 so we'll do a slight modification here in the expression editor to uh, achieve the desired effect um, we're going, to uh, we're going to multiply the input by 10 apply so now if I move gamma uh, let's go back to 1, the default value uh, the chroma changes a lot faster but we have a problem that is in our default position for gamma the chroma contrast is already 10 uh, and therefore it is, it is changing um, changing the color of this image so we'll simply add minus 10 up here to this expression and apply and uh, now as you can see gamma value is 1 chroma contrast value is 0 and if I move this the color is changing quite rapidly so, that, so that's good so far I will step out of the color corrector and open the uh, effects properties for blur lock that effects properties for color correction and we will link gamma to uh, the blur amount over here uh, blur amount uses the same scale 100, 0 to 100 like uh, chroma contrast does so we will modify this expression using the same formula uh, that we use for, for chroma contrast which was times 10 minus 10 and apply close that so at our default value of gamma 1 um, there is no blur but as we start moving gamma up to 10 uh, the amount of blur is rising as well uh, there's no actual blur uh, because the blur radius is at 0 on both x and y and uh, to correct that we will link the amount to X and Y and let's see what happens now if we move gamma the picture is blurring but may not be blurring enough fa quickly enough for the effects to work so we will modify each one of these expressions by multiplying uh, the original amount by let's say 8 and modify the Y radius by 8 so now when I move gamma the picture is getting blown out and blurred very fast uh, this kind of gamma and uh, chroma contrast manipulation is likely to produce uh, illegal video so we'll go to RGB tab and enable RGB clipping on all three channels. Uh, so this way we protect the signal in both RGB and component domain. So now what we can do with this interesting effect is uh, let's bring our clip back on the timeline. Take another one here. Um, we will make a glow and blur transition between these two clips. Uh, I'll start by making a dissolve right here in the middle center dissolve six frames long there's our dissolve and uh, we'll control click these two effects copy them with control C and paste them roughly centered over the uh, dissolve effect um, now we can 
open the effects properties for the uh, color corrector, reset gamma back to 1, and uh, keyframe this by going, going to the first frame, keyframing it at, at value 1, going right in the middle of the dissolve, keying in value 10, and going to the end and uh, going back to 1, which will uh, put all the values back in their uh, normal position. So here's our effect. Or in real time, looks like that. Um, one last thing we can do with these two is, uh, while they're still selected, right mouse click and turn these effects to tree. So they appear as a single um, effect that uh, if you open effects properties you can easily save anywhere you'd like for later use. We're going to build one more effect uh, that will demonstrate a, a slightly different way about uh, creating these. So I'll take our man front clip, put it on a timeline, uh, place a DVE clip effect on top of it, and uh, I'll change this to frame processing. Again, this is not essential. It will only uh, give us better picture quality on the desktop, but it's typically not something you would want to do if you're working with uh, interlaced video. Um, this time around, instead of linking any of these values together, I'm going to right mouse click and um, select Create Expression. Delete the zero, click on Insert, and select Random Custom. Um, this is a random number generator. Uh, seed is the seed that kicks off the uh, uh, random number generator so uh, two generators don't look uh, too much alike. A minimum and a maximum are the numbers between which the output of the generator is bracketed. So if I change minimum to minus 15 and maximum to plus 15, that will give us the output of the random generator between minus 15 and plus 15. And for seed, we'll just pick any number, let's say 3, and apply. So now, what's going on is the picture is moving left and right, and if you observe the values in the um, X translate property, uh, those numbers will be anywhere between minus 15 and plus 15. So that's good, and I will Control-C copy this expression, right mouse click on Y, create expression, paste it over here, I will modify the seed to 12 and uh, we'll leave everything else the same. Apply. So now we have a shake happening on X and Y. And we'll do one more of these uh, for Z uh, rotation. Create expression, paste, uh, 22 let's say. And uh, now. Um, this is great, but it's just pictures rotating too much. So, so we'll dampen this by going minus three, let's say, to plus three, which will produce a number between minus three and plus three. Apply, and uh, when I press play, it looks like a pretty good shake. Uh, the only thing is uh, to eliminate the white, uh, the black edges on the side. You want to push into the picture just enough to lose the edges. Well, that's it. This was the first of the Avid DS Expressions tutorials, and I hope that it will give you some good ideas what can be created using expressions in Avid DS. If you would like to download any of the presets that we have created today, uh, please visit www.hdhead.com.